When you hear of crusade, crusade were murderous, barbarous hordes of Christian savages that moved from the whole of Europe into uh, Judea. But the first crusade never made, made it. The second crusade was led by a man called Peter the Hamid. And Peter the Hamid took instructions from the Goose in Mbata. You know, it was the one that directed him on how to go and fight the Muslims. They then came into Jerusalem. That second crusade did reach Jerusalem and they fight, fought a long war. The crusade started from 1096 to almost 1335. It lasted over uh, 400 years. The Christian crusade. In one of the Christian crusades, children of Europe were also mobilized to go and fight the Muslim infidels. However, when they reached the shores of the Mediterranean, the Christian Europeans sold their children to the Muslims, whom they had come to fight. Let's first look at the first five books of Moses, known as the Pentateuch. According to the Bible, using evidence from the Bible, now uh, I need to say this quite clearly so you can understand. When we talk about the religion of Judaism, or the followers of the Torah, or we talk, talk about Christianity. Number one, we shall talk about Christianity from a Christian point of view, using the Bible. You understand? Then secondly, we talk about Christianity from a history point of view, using other sources uh, or using other laws. So in this case, I am talking about Christianity from the Bible's point of view. So some of you who have Bibles, uh, you can pick up and say, oh, no, 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 that is not true. According to the Bible, Moses, who wrote the first five books of the Bible, was, was educated in Africa. Educated in Africa, and he was mighty in words and deeds. And that is from the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 22. Acts 7, 22. Moses was educated in Africa, in the religion of the ancient Egyptians. He was educated in Africa, and we have already covered and seen some of the things that Africans taught about God. We have seen that from the Book of the Dead. We have seen the springboard Ra. We have seen the wife of, we have seen Osiris. We have seen how he was murdered, how he was resurrected. We have seen the concept of eternal life. We have seen the judgment in the Hall of Judgment. We have seen the different angels or different natures that existed in Africa and in the written form. So Moses, according to the Bible, was there at 7:22. At 7:22, was educated in the knowledge of the ancient Egyptians, and he was mighty in words and deeds. In fact. If you remember, somewhere in the Bible, when Moses goes to the Pharaoh to say, let my people go, they say Moses threw down his staff and it turned into a snake. What, what, what chapter is that? Where Moses goes to the Pharaoh and uh, he throws down his stick and it turns into a snake. Exodus. Exodus 1. Who is a, who is a religious person here? Who knows the Bible? Yeah? Okay. But he throws down his stick and it changes into a snake. And the Bible says that the Egyptians in turn, the Pharaoh called on his physicians and sages and sorcerers. And they did the same. You understand? Each man threw down his staff and it turned into what? Into a snake. The Bible adds. Moses, the snake, ate all the other snakes. Yeah? Do you know why? Because Moses was writing. If you are writing, you can't say, well, we all make snakes, but my snakes run away. No. <laughs> you have to say, well, you know, my snakes was very deep. So it chewed up all the other snakes. Yeah? So, whatever 
Moses could do, they could also do. You know, when they, when they said uh, most of the miracles that you see Moses making, you know, the physicians and sages and the uh, whatever also repeat the same. So, understand that according to the Bible, Moses was educated in Africa, and it was from Africa. Before the Hebrews in the Bible come to Africa, they really do not have an organized religion. They don't have organized religion. By the way, the, word, the name Moses or Aha Moses is a typical ancient Egyptian name. And there was a pharaoh called Aha Moses. Aha Moses was a pharaoh uh, around 1650 BC. And he had a wife known as Aha Moses Nafetari. And these were the ones that chased away the Asiatics who had invaded Africa, known as the Hyksox or Hyksox kings. So, it is not an uncommon name, the name Moses, or uh, in Hebrew, the name Moses is called Moshe. Moshe. Yeah. So, I want you to keep this in context. Narvara develops philosophical philosophies. From these philosophies, religion. Now, part of this area is called North East Africa. Let us first see the people that populated that area according to the Bible. The Bible has a book called the Book of Genealogy. Who knows what the Book of Genealogy is in the Bible? The Book of Genealogy. You disappoint me. Yes, but genealogy in the Book of, in the book of Genesis, there is a particular book called Book of Genealogy or referred to as the book of genealogy. The people of the world, according to the Bible. Christians, I am supposed to be one who is not one of you. Eh? Okay. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 10. Genesis 10. The book of Genesis, chapter 10. In this book of Genesis, chapter 10, it tells how the world was peopled after the flood. The peopling of the world after the flood. According to the biblical story, or according to the Bible, there is a flood. The whole world is incinerated. Yeah. Anybody with the King James version of the Bible? Anyone? King James? You have a King James? Yeah. Show it to me. That can't be a King James. But there is no version. Revise. Eh? Revise is revising. Revise. Ah. Now, when I talked about the Bible, by the way, that thank you for mentioning that. I said, on the Bible they write version. Revise. Yeah? And that is a key word. Because the version of the Bible is not the Bible. And when they say revise it, you have to say to yourself, revise it by who and why. That's a key question. Revise. For example, uh, make sure you come with Bibles to me. If you pick this book, Good News, and you are reading the same chapter as somebody who has the King James Bible or Jerusalem Bible, it will be totally different. Totally different. Don't be wrong. That is true. The words they use, for example, in the King James Bible, they use, when they talk about Africans, they talk about Ethiopia or Egyptians. In other Bible, they won't call them Ethiopia or Egyptian, they call them Kushite. Yeah? Now, <coughs> Kushite is supposed to hide Ethiopia. Yeah? So, so that when you are reading as an African, you don't say, oh, oh yeah, well, I mean, they're in Ethiopia. You will not know that Kush is Ethiopia. You understand? So you will find that most of the time, that most of these revised, they revise it to try to match it with popular, with popular uh, ideology at the time. That's why revision is taking place. But let's go to the book of genealogy. In the book of genealogy, we are told that the whole world was destroyed by the flood, water. Which, of course, uh, is a scientific impossibility. Because where did the water come from? And if, after the flood, where did the water go? 
but we won't go into this, we'll just stick to the biblical story. Noah is supposed to have carried animals into the boat. Noah made an ark. He preached for 40 years, didn't get a single convert. Eventually he gets in this ark, and the ark is sealed, and the whole world is flooded. But in the ark, he's supposed to have taken two animals, you know, male and female. So you have two antelopes, two bushbacks, two white holes, two water holes, two snakes, and the snake he couldn't just take a cobra. He had to take two puff adders, you know, two rattlesnakes. Noah had to travel to Africa. Noah traveled here, according to the Bible, because only in East Africa you have gorillas. So if Noah had to get gorillas, he would have to have traveled to, uh, to, to the border of Rwanda and the Congo, you know, to take two gorillas. Otherwise, the gorillas would not be here. They would have been uh, drowned in the ark. Noah, by the way, must have traveled to South America to get a llama, you know, uh, because the llamas are only in South America. Then he went to Australia to get kangaroos. Ah, kangaroos are in Australia. Then Noah went to get the way from the North Pole or from, you know, wearing seas. And then the most interesting thing is Noah gets elephants, for example. An elephant, two elephants. An elephant eats 14 tons of grass every day. 14 tons. Noah was in the boat for how long? 40 days, 40 days, and 40 nights. Now, so, an elephant is 14 tons of grass every day. Uh, he had two elephants, that's how many? Uh, 28 tons of grass. Times the number of days Noah was in the ark. That tells you the amount of grass Noah had to cut alone. Remember, Noah was already an old man. He was already very old. He had a wife and three sons. So, really, Noah had a Herculean task to cut grass for an elephant alone. You know, two elephants, you know, 28 tons. So, the, imagine the hold of the boat for elephant grass. Now, we are not talking about buffaloes, which also eat grass. You know, we are not talking about giraffes. The boat had to be long enough. Giraffes, which eat, uh, you know, also grass. We are not talking about zebras and what hogs. And, and uh, he had to run after zebras, you know, to catch them. He had to get a millipede, a millipede, and a centipede, and then turn the millipede to work out whether it was male or female, because, you know, most of them were the same. So you know, had to hire a group of scientists yeah, to sit there and work out. No, I had to get all these small creeping crawlies, a cheetah boy, yeah, and then work out whether it is male or female. No, I had to get even bed bugs, you know, Two bed bags, you know, to see, you know, two worms, you know, to put them. Because if you radically think that Noah did it, then you have to think in those terms. Noah had to go in the sky and chase an eagle. Hold the eagle, turn around and see when it was male and female, then take two eagles. Noah had to get two crested cranes. You know, Noah had to get two egrets. So you could see that Noah really had to do an amazing task get all these animals into the boat. And right now, I am talking in terms of the Bible. I am talking according to the Bible. I am not quoting anything else. Noah had to get animals, male and female. And some of these animals are only specific to certain regions. So Noah had to go to South America. I don't know how he would have brought a llama or a kangaroo, but he found a way to get them into the ark. Because according to the Bible, if you didn't make it into the ark, you don't exist. You understand? So, the other thing we have to know from our understanding of melanin is that according to the Bible, Noah had to be a black person. You understand? Why do I say Noah had to be a black person? Can anybody tell me? Why do I say Noah had to be a black person according to the Bible? Because Noah produced three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. If Noah was white, would he have produced black people? I can't hear you. No. He wouldn't. Because a recessive gene can produce a dominant, a white person can produce a black person. So we don't have to debate this in, uh, in biology, whether Noah, or in genetics, whether Noah could have been white. According to genetics, 
If Noah was really the one who populated the world after the flood, he must have been black. Because the black person could produce white, whereas if Noah had been white, he could never have produced black people. So, Noah goes into the ark. Now, he has three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And we are supposed to be the sons of Ham. Now, read Genesis 10 from chapter, the sons of Ham. <coughs> read for us the sons of Ham. Now listen, the sons of Ham. Here, sons represents nations. It doesn't really represent that Noah gave us all these children. No, it represents nations. Nations associated with Ham. Can you read? The sons of Ham. Sons of Ham. I need you to write this. All these sons. Uh, the Cush. Cush? Which I said means what? Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yes. Egypt. Egypt, which means what? Egypt was called Misra. If you read, for example, uh, what I'm saying is different. In other Bibles, they will not call it Egypt. They will call it Misra. Misra is Hebrew. The, the Arabs call it Misri. You understand? Misri. Are Misri, or those of you who have been to, to, to Cairo, you know the Arabs call it Misri. Yeah? The Hebrews call it Misra. So, the sons of Ham, Cush, which is Ethiopia, Egypt or Misri, uh -huh. Libya. Libya and Canaan. And Canaan, Palestine, Jordan, and modern state of Israel. Now let me tell you this. In the King James Bible, could you read the same? Could you hold the Bible? Uh, uh, what verse is that? Genesis chapter 10. Yes. Verse. No, why you started saying the sons of Ham? Yes. Okay. Read the verse 6 if you have a King James Version. Chapter 10, verse 6. The sons of Ham. The sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Now, I told you that they are different. You understand? Yeah. And you are saying, you, are, you put on an expression, surprising. <laughs> Put is quite different from Libya. Put actually refers to Kenya, Somaliland, and Uganda. Kenya, Somaliland, and Uganda. Libya is something else. Libya, I'll show you where Libya is on the ancient map. No single author would put, uh, would put Libya in the Bible. So this is, uh, this is precisely what I'm telling you. Where I said to you, version means anything other than the original. And you cannot get to the truth until you get the original or closer to the original. You understand? So you see the point, see what I was saying. He says, you know, uh, put, uh, put uh, uh, Kainan and Mizra and, and Kush. This one says Libya. Li this is, Libya is not there. It was not in Sons of Ham. But he puts it. Yeah? So that's why I wanted you tomorrow come with the Bible. So you start reading and you will see the synchronicity. There will be none. You know, each one writes what he thinks, depending on the ideology they want to project. You understand? Now, so, uh, now, tell us, Ethiopia, you got to know, tell us Ethiopia's sons. Kush, Kush's sons. Continue and say the sons of Kush. The ancestors of people, yeah. the descendants of Kush. Yes. Listen, the descendants of Kush, the sons of Ethiopia. Uh huh. Were the people of Seba. Were the people of Seba? Havila. Havila. Please write this. Seba, Havila. Uh huh. Sebta. Sebta. Rama. Rama. And Septeka. And Septeka. Continue. The descendants of Rama. The descendants of Rama? They are the people of Sheba. Why the people of Sheba? And Dedan. And Dedan. Uh-huh. Cush had a son named Nimrod. Cush had a son named Nimrod. In King James it says Cush begot Nimrod. Which is different from had a son. Begot is different in English from had a son. Cush uh, begot Nimrod. Uh-huh. Who became the one okay. Wait, wait, wait. If we were to go by what he says, that 
are uh, you know, sorry. If you are to go by what you say, that you are the one who read Libya, that harm, huh, you go to Libya. This is where Libya is. Can you see? So, if you are to write it, at UBC you will say, push, we got people of Nigeria, and Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire. I am not the one who did this now, in 1663 or some, something around this. Can you see Libya? Huh? So, uh, what we are saying, we are not making it up. It is, if you don't get in the story and know it, you will be deceived. You will be told lies, and you will believe a liar the truth. Yeah? Now, continue. Kush begot the sun. You said Kush had a sun called. What does it say in your Bible? What does it say in your Bible about Kush? It says Kush did what? Kush begot the Nimrod. Kush begot the Nimrod. You say it did what? What does it say? Had a son. This one says Kush had a son called Nimrod. Uh-huh. Continue. Who became the world's first great what? Conqueror. Conqueror. That is not what the Bible says. The, the oracle. That's what it means. This one gives everyday meaning. But the Bible says what? Uh, he began to be a mighty one on the earth. Do you hear that? He began to be the mighty one on the earth. The original King James says he became the first potentate on earth. First ruler. But this is revised by Europeans, so they are into country. So they put conquer. So when you are saying we as African people have never conquered anyone, they will say, what are you saying? Even the Bible says, you Ethiopians went and conquered the whole world. Ruling and conquering is two different things. Museveni is the ruler of Uganda, but he's not a conqueror of Uganda. You understand? So, the, 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 the myth that there is the Bible is not true, is false. And the myth that the Bible says the same thing is not true. Everybody who rewrites the Bible rewrites it for their own reason and they put what they want. But significant for us black people is that Ethiopia begot Nimrod who became the first mighty person on earth, the first ruler on earth, uh, to rule the world. It doesn't say Spain, Kush begot Spain, or Kush begot England, or begot America, and became the first ruler. No, you became the first ruler. So when I said to you that in ancient times, the whole world belonged to the black man and the black woman, I am not making it up. I can use your very reference from your very book to show you that you were the first people to rule the world. You understand that? And there's nothing more disarming than me using the book that somebody has to show them that you are the first people. So read. You become the first ruler or the first conqueror, uh -huh. first to be included in his kingdom. By the Lord's help. By the Lord's help. Does it say that? Does it say it? Kush became the first. He, he was a, a mighty hunter before the Lord. Yes. Therefore, it's the same like Nimrod. A mighty hunter before the Lord. Now listen to this. Listen. He says by the Lord's help. Does it say there that he was helped by God? So read it again. You listen to this too. Read yours. By the Lord's help. He was a great hunter. By the Lord's help, he was a great hunter. Is it there? No. It's not. This is falsehood. He was a, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Yes. Therefore, he said, like the Lord, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Now, that's before the Lord mean helped by God. <laughs> that's what it means. Hunting for God? How? <laughs> How do you hunt for God? <laughs> yeah. But do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you are saying before the Lord, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, and it is said like Nimrod the mighty hunter. And you are saying, by the Lord's help, you know, he became
became a mighty hunter. That's ideology. That's ideas and purpose. Meaning, you can't become great unless God has helped you. Let's interpret it from the script. Why are you changing the script? For a reason. 